Can Samsung's flagship, which is almost a year old, compete with Nokia's most recent flagship? I'm Taylor Martin, this is Pocket Now, and this is the Lumia Icon versus the Samsung Galaxy S4. Samsung's flagships from the last few years have all been well-rounded and appeal to a broad spectrum of users. Nokia is renowned for the quality of its handsets, solid design, build quality, and great image sensors. Samsung is the frontrunner in the Android space, and Nokia is keeping Windows Phone afloat almost single-handed. So taking one of the best Android phones of 2013 and comparing it to the latest top-tier phone from the leading Windows Phone maker, how do the two phones compare? Let's take a look in this Lumia Icon and Galaxy S4 comparison. To get it out of the way from the very beginning, the Lumia Icon has a clear, yet very slight advantage in hardware. The Galaxy S4 unit we're dealing with is a CDMA model on Verizon, so it ships with a Snapdragon 600 chipset made of a 1.9GHz quad-core Crate 300 CPU and Adreno 320 GPU, but it also comes in an Exynos 5 Octa version overseas and a Snapdragon 800 model in select regions. It has a 13 megapixel camera, ships with 16GB of fixed storage, and a 2600mAh battery. The Lumi Icon ships with a Snapdragon 800, composed of a 2.2GHz quad-core Crate 400 CPU and Adreno 330 GPU. It has double the inbuilt storage at 32GB but no microSD card slot, a 20 megapixel camera, and a 2420mAh battery. Both phones have 2GB of RAM, Wi-Fi AC, NFC, and wireless charging if you count an official aftermarket back cover from Samsung. Both also have 5-inch 1080p AMOLED displays. Both panels offer the same side visibility, very inky blacks, high contrast, and high saturation. One is just as sharp as the other, though the Lumia Icon's display does appear to be a tad warmer than the S4's. Frankly, however, we'd rate them equally. And about those casings, they're stark contrasts from one another, in almost every way. Samsung's goal with the Galaxy S4 was extreme portability, and thus the S4 is ultra lightweight and has as little wasted space as physically possible. It measures just 136.7mm tall, 69.6mm wide, and 7.9mm thick. The icon certainly isn't much larger, but it sure feels like it. It's only 0.3mm taller and 0.4mm wider, but it is 1.9mm thicker, and the Galaxy S4 weighs just 130.1 grams, while the Lumia icon is a full 36.9 grams heftier. And there's no forgetting it's in your pocket, whereas the S4 is barely there. But their appearances especially are where the biggest differences reside. The Galaxy S4 is curvy with wide radius corners and flowing lines. This adds to the illusion that the S4 is much smaller when it actually isn't. It's also made out of slimy, super slick materials, mostly plastic with foam metal trim around the edges and a fake textured hyperglaze finish around back. The Lumia Icon, on the other hand, isn't made of any facade materials. The trim is metal, and the matte finished polycarbonate around back feels far more high-end, and it also helps with grip. The design is industrial and boxy. While some may call that boring, uninspired, or understated, we feel it's a much more beautiful device that feels far more substantial and sturdy in the hand. Based on appearances and touch alone, it feels more worth premium pricing than its all-plastic foe. The software situation is a different story. It's much more back and forth. The Galaxy S4 on Verizon is currently running Android version 4.3. It received its most recent update back in December 2013, but the KitKat update began rolling out to the US cellular model yesterday, and it will likely soon follow for other US carrier models. Other versions of the Galaxy S4 received KitKat long ago, such as the Google Play Edition, though it doesn't feature TouchWiz and instead comes with a bone stock version of Android. The Icon ships with the most recent version of Windows Phone 8 out of the box, Update 3 with the Nokia Lumia Black update, which brings a host of features on its own, like raw image capture support. Samsung's and Nokia's ideas of value-adding features are largely different, however. TouchWiz comes packed to the brim with dozens of features, many of which few will ever use. Smart Stay, Smart Scroll, Smart Rotate, Air Gesture, and many, many more. It comes with tons of preloaded apps and very useful multitasking software in the form of multi-window. None of this can be removed by default. It's baked in, and uninstallation is disabled. The Lumia Icon comes with all of Nokia's applications built in. Nokia Camera, Care, Cinemagraph, Creative Studio, Mix Radio, Storyteller, Here, and App Folder. If at any time you don't want any of this, it can be removed quite easily. The other difference here is outside the OEM's control. Ecosystem. The Android ecosystem is infinitely vast, with hundreds of thousands more titles, games, and other helpful apps. The Windows Phone Store is improving, as we've seen more major third-party developers jump on board, but it's still quite visibly in its infancy. Android, by nature, is also much more accessible. If you don't like the stock browser, download another. 
Switching on Wi-Fi and toggling various settings is quicker and more simple on Android. It's simply a more developed and mature operating system. In that same vein, Windows Phone has the tendency to operate more smoothly than Android on various levels, especially if we're comparing Windows Phone 8 to Jelly Bean. KitKat brings a far more pleasing Android experience, and our Galaxy S4 does not officially support the latest version of Android just yet. Being filled to the top of the features we rarely ever need or want doesn't help matters either. The Snapdragon 800 paired with Windows Phone provides one of the smoothest mobile OS experiences we've ever encountered. It is the epitome of polish. Meanwhile, the Galaxy S4 isn't the worst experience ever. It manages to hold its own in many situations, but it's not immune to stutters and lag. Our time with the Google Play Edition Galaxy S4 was far more memorable, at least in terms of performance, but this current model with this version of software is a far cry from Android at its finest. In benchmarks like the SunSpider JavaScript test, you'll see the Lumia icon finish about twice as fast. You'll see more checkerboarding in the browser on busy web pages, and you simply won't see the icon slow down, no matter what you throw at it. The S4 will sometimes begin to get sluggish through some heavier usage. We still haven't quite used the icon long enough to have a great estimate of its stamina, but the Galaxy S4 has been extensively tested through and through. On great days, it should have no problem lasting an entire day on a single charge, though you'll likely need to plug it in later in the evening. The Lumia icon has a slightly smaller battery capacity, faster and more powerful chipset, but for all intents and purposes, the same display. So far, we haven't had to plug it in to last through an entire day, even through heavy testing. Data speeds and network performance have been much more impressive on the icon. Side by side, the icon consistently pulls faster data speeds and appears to have a stronger connection. Its average downlink and uplink, respectively, were 13.4 megabits per second and 10.6 megabits per second. The S4, on the other hand, averaged 3.6 megabits per second down and 6.1 megabits per second up in the same areas on the same servers. The Galaxy S4's camera is no match for the icon's image sensing capabilities. The 13 megapixel shooter on the back of the S4 isn't bad though. In fact, it's a pretty decent shooter in its own right. It can take pictures with a fair amount of detail, but unlike the icon's 20 megapixel camera, it's not optically stabilized. Samsung tries to boost its low light performance with software stabilization, and it simply doesn't compare. The icon's low light performance on the other hand is stunning, for a phone. But it's even more balanced in great shooting conditions. And while most of the pictures you take and share with the icon will only be 5 megapixels, they will be clearer and more sharp than the S4's default 9 megapixel images for one reason. The 16 megapixel pictures taken with the icon are oversampled down into 5 megapixel images. The 9 megapixel images from the S4 aren't oversampled at all, and instead they're cropped from 13 megapixels. This is immediately noticeable in the viewfinder by the much more narrow field of view. Hands down, if you're after superior image sensing, the icon is your best bet out of these two. So has Samsung's smartphone held up against the test of time, or is it no match for the Lumia icon? If you want a super camera experience, the Lumia icon is the clear choice. OIS and the higher res sensor paired with the Nokia camera app make the icon a very tough image sensing competitor, and its build quality and design are certainly more alluring than the cheap, plastic ridden S4. But if you're after a more complete experience with a lot more flexibility and the ability to do with your phone as you please, the Galaxy S4 makes a compelling argument for itself. Overall, it's a more well-rounded experience with a lot more content and over 10 times the application offering. If you can deal with the growing pains of Windows Phone, we recommend giving the icon a try as it's one of the most impressive displays of Windows Phone we've seen to date. Otherwise, the Galaxy S4 is a nice obligatory recommendation. Folks, that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to click the thumbs up button below to help us out and subscribe to the channel to see more videos in the future as well as more Lumia icon coverage. Be sure to follow us in all the usual places, Twitter, Facebook, and Google Plus at PocketNow. I'm Taylor Martin, you can find me on Twitter at CasperTech, and I will see you next time.